What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. The lighting is really bad in here when it's dark. My face looks super red, I need to figure some stuff out. I've got my uh, lights that I'm able to put in, if I can put them in, i just got to remember to put I've got so much stuff to do and I haven't done any of it yet because I've just been honestly working so hard. And I know that sounds weird because this is FIFA and I play FIFA and I sit at my desk most of the day. Not all of the day, contrary to what some people would like to believe. Not all of the day, but most of the day sit at my desk playing FIFA um, getting these videos out for you to the point where it's, it's like 1am right now and I'm recording this video and the reason like this was supposed to be Sunday's video but I said to you guys yesterday jokingly somewhat that if you get the video to 10,000 likes before 3am that I would upload the uh, um, rewards at 3am and it's currently 0044 so it's 16 minutes before one so there's two hours and 16 minutes left it's only been up for about two hours and 45 minutes and it already has 8,000 likes so it looks like i am uploading that so this video is coming a day earlier which means everything is coming a day earlier which is actually a good thing because it kind of gets things back on track a little bit but um i wasn't ready i just i wasn't i wasn't ready so i'm working late through the night for your guys' benefit, which I think is uh, very, very nice of me. Now, I really do need to sort the lighting out. I look, I need a shave, I need a haircut, I'm gonna go and find over the weekend the hairdressers uh, and barbers and get it all done, all taken care of. Um, it's just getting messy, isn't it? It's, it's, it's gone past that, oh my God, that's a sick beard stage to, dude, do you, like, do you want some change? Do you want some food? Like, do you need a place to stay? Like, it's at that kind of point. And uh, it's not nice. Anyway, I've picked up what I think are some fantastic topics for conversation here today. And what you are going to see here today is um, squad building challenges, gameplay in divisions, and some uh, market stuff of me buying. It's not well, yeah, buying and selling players. Happy days. Um, I obviously packed the Defoe in the rewards yesterday and uh, I thought, you know what, I might use him. I wanted to use him in division to see how good he was. I might use him in weekend league, I'm not sure. This weekend league for me is going to be one of the most relaxed weekend leagues I think uh, I've ever played in. I only need 9 wins to get to Elite 3 for the month, which is the exact same reward as Elite 1 for the month and I'm way too far off to even consider Top 100. So, once I get 9 wins, my elite for the month is done. Then it's, what do I want for the week? For me personally, I feel like gold 1 is a really good achievement. Two 100k packs, 50k coins. So as soon as I get to 25 wins and 9, well, 9 wins for the month and 25 wins for the week, I'm, I'm happy there. I don't care how well I do. And, and I, I wonder, can I get 25 wins with the foe up front? We're going to find out this weekend. Um, but the first comment is from generic name one um, and he says, Nep, this is going to sound dumb, and it did, <laughs> but hear me out. Do you think that there should be some sort of fitness deduction after a big number of saves? Like, for example, if Jack Butler makes 12 saves in the game, maybe he picks up one game injury or loses a lot more fitness than normal. Also, another idea is like something like the 12th save a goalie is a little bit more sluggish, not counting long shots. No, no. What, like, why would someone making 12 saves mean that they get injured for a game? That's ridiculous. Um, no, you, you're, you're, like, you're creating problems for no reason, like you, you're creating something like let's say EA did put this in, now all of a sudden you, you've given, some people are going to be like oh my god he only made 10 saves and he got a great game injury and people are going to have to start rotating goalkeepers every game, that's, that's silly, it's just silly, fitness isn't a problem in this game, you've got fitness cards, they're cheap, you can get them for free if you use bronze pack method, like fitness isn't a problem, especially goalkeeper fitness, goalkeepers don't get like unfit in games. They get unfit because of their unhealthy lifestyle, but you see goalkeepers go on to 35, 36, 38, 40 years old at the highest level quite regularly because of how healthy they stay because of the position they play. It would be illogical for EA to start punishing goalkeepers in the game for making saves when that's their job. That's like saying every, every striker that scores a hat-trick gets a three-game foot injury just because he's kicked the ball so much. It's just ridiculous. You're right. It did sound dumb, but I did hear you out. And that's my opinion on the subject. Matthew McGuigan says, uh, Nep, should I save up for normal Kante, which is 27k, or save up an extra 150k and get informed Kante? I don't open packs with points and I go to school and play football, so I don't know if I'll have the time to save up that much money for informed Kante by just playing games, what should I do? I mean, well, first of all, you've kind of answered your own question. You've said, should I save up for one or the other? By the way, I don't know if I'll be able to save up for the other. So, save up for the one. But alternatively as well, why not just buy the regular Kante when you can afford him, use him, and then when you can afford the other one, or if, you know, buy him, and if you can't, then it doesn't matter. 
It's, uh, it, I, I think that's quite a simple solution personally, but uh, good luck with uh, school and football, bro. Good luck with school and football. Um, random topics, random times, fantastic names. Says, hi, Nep, love your vids. I watch them all. Same. Uh, do you think that foot accounts are actually weighted differently in terms of pack luck and maybe even gameplay luck? Not saying I necessarily believe this. No, I don't. It's all something called RNG, random number generator. You have, you, if, if you opened a 7.5k pack and packed Ronaldo, you have a 1 in whatever chance to do that. I don't know the odds because he don't release the odds, but you have a specific chance to pack a Ronaldo in that pack. The very next pack you open, you have that exact same chance to pack Ronaldo. Just like I have that exact same chance to pack Ronaldo, and Joe Bloggs has that exact same chance to pack Ronaldo. It's just matters if the dice rolls in your favour. A game that I play quite a lot, Diablo 3, has is heavy in uh, RNG for the way it rolls its like its drops, its loot in the game, and um, like even even in that game, like the the drop roll, the drop like the drop rates are exactly the same for everyone across the board. No matter if you've been playing a minute, an hour, a day, a month, a year, it doesn't make any difference. The drop rates are the same. You can increase the uh, the find based on um, you can create increase the amount of drops based on some items that you have on your character but the actual rate of the, like the specific item of the drop is there's there's a specific rate for each thing but I've still seen on there where I've been playing with someone and we both start at the same level and I get dropped the sword that I need or the bow that I need two three four times before my friend gets it even once just because the random number generator is just on my side that's all there is. Think of it as a as dice, right? Say you've got 10 dice in front of you, and to pack Ronaldo, you need to roll a 6 on every dice in the same roll. So you roll your 10 dice. Do you get all 6s? No. Did your friend get all 6s? No. So neither of you get Ronaldo. Then you roll the dice again. Did you get all 6s? It's very unlikely, because it's, it's a lot to ask to get 10 you know, ten sixes like that. So no, you didn't. Your friend does it. No, he didn't. You roll 10 dice again, you get 10 sixes. Oh my god, I've, you know, you packed Ronaldo. Your friend rolls it another 100 times and he still never gets 10 sixes. And he's probably sitting there saying, oh my god, you got it after three rolls and your record's terrible and my record's incredible, it must be linked to records. It's nothing to do with records, it's nothing to do with how many FIFA points you spend or what type of pack you open. It's to do with those imaginary dice, which is a random number generator within the EA engine as to whether you do or you don't get the luck. That's all there is to it, in my opinion. I don't have any facts to back that up. It's just based off the knowledge of what I know within gaming and how it works. Aussie FIFA HD says, for all of the small YouTubers, and he shouts at me in big capital letters and there's no need, I'm right here. He says, uh, Nep, you're obviously one of the most successful FIFA YouTubers out of many who have tried and failed. If you had one bit of advice to becoming a successful FIFA YouTuber like you, what would it be? You in particular inspire me and I'm sure many other viewers of your channel. This question is important to me and I hope you read this. I've actually answered this in, in depth in a video a couple of videos ago. Um, but in short, the, the one tip I'll give to someone is just stay true to yourself and stay consistent. Don't get disheartened by not getting viewers. If you love what you do, keep doing it for one person who watches your videos, 100 people or 100,000 people. Because if you enjoy it, they'll enjoy it and your, your community will start to grow. Uh, if you upload once that day and then three times the next day and then not for three weeks and then you know you get a big player so that's going to be your video and you upload twice again in the day and you're sporadic with your uploading, people, don't, people aren't going to know what the hell's going on with your video. Um, with you know with your video schedule they're probably not even going to remember you um, so yeah I would say stay consistent have a have a schedule have a set timetable when you're going to upload and make sure that no matter how many views you get even if it's zero views to start with just just be happy be, be true to you make sure you put out content you enjoy and that's the best advice I can give with that one next is from Tyler Medeiros are you sticking with the BPL or will you switch leagues? Right now I'm sticking with the BPL just because it's offered me the best players for free so far. Uh, you know, we've got the Red Walcott, the Red Mane, we've got the Player of the Month, Son, Sterling and Hazard. We've got the Squad Building Challenge, Gareth Barry. Like, there is so much offered to us from the BPL. And the players that I want that aren't from the BPL are just out of my price range. Ronaldo, Bale, you know, Suarez, Neymar, Modric and... and uh, uh, Rodriguez I can afford now, but um, like the superstars I would want to replace my special cards are, are just out of my price range. So until there's special cards of those I've picked up or until they're in my price range, 
I'll be sticking with the BPL until I can afford to build a, a very good team from a different league. Because there's no point taking off the BPL team and going to a La Liga, sorry, a Serie A team or a Calcio A team uh, and just having basically the same standard of players and all I've done is lost out on tax selling my main team and then I've got loads of superstars sitting on the bench unable to be played with. So yeah, for now, um, I'm staying uh, with this. Now, I bought Dario Serna for 13,000 coins. That's so crazy how cheap he was. And I also went and bought myself Khamenei for 10,500 coins. And I went and bought Ricardo Charisma for 36,500 coins. Um, I think uh, uh, Charisma, Serna and Leun will make super subs um, in many positions. And there was actually a question... Uh, which I'll answer in a second about substitutes. Bob Builder says, Nep, should I do the Matuidi challenge right now or should I wait till the last day? Great series, watch every episode so far, keep up the good work. Well, thank you for the support, dude. Um, I would honestly say don't do the Matuidi series, uh, uh, Squad Builder challenge. You've got, you're going to spend, because of the, the value of players that are required for that Squad Builder challenge, you're going to spend at least seven to 10,000 coins, probably between seven and 10,000 coins on completing that challenge to get a Matuidi on loan for 20 games in a two-player pack. The two-player pack is very, very unlikely you're going to get anything returned out of that. So on the back of that, I would say don't even bother because, uh, you know, uh, you, you need to hit Jackpot City to make your money back. And then when you consider the actual price of Matuidi, he's like 26,000 coins. So you're going to spend over a third of his, of his actual value to have him for just 20 games. Um, when if you buy him normally, you might lose a bit on depreciation, but you're going to be able to sell him whenever you want and get some money back. Whereas the loan one, you play 20 games with him and that's just it, it's all gone. So uh, yeah, th this, this loan Matuidi, I don't know if it's necessarily worth it. I didn't go for it. I did the Ibrahimovic one. I didn't do the um, Rodriguez left back one. I didn't do the Matuidi one. I don't think they're worth it. I just don't think they're worth it. My personal opinion, of course. Dan Sewell says, what positions are most important to substitute during the game? And this is an interesting question because there is no one right or one wrong answer for this. Uh, the, the simple answer, or yeah, I suppose the simple answer is, is change the positions that require changing. Um, so uh, if, like for me personally, in last weekend's weekend league, I noticed that Leun, uh, sorry, not Leun, that Kozawa was running out of fitness quite quickly in games. By the 60th, 65th minute, he was low on stamina. And because he already had like low pace, even though I had a good chem style on him, because he already had low pace, he was getting exposed quite a lot. So quite often at, at half time or around the 60th minute, I would bring Leun on in that left back spot, give myself a good injection of pace and a really good player on the team. Uh, the same when I had Gareth Barry on the team a lot. Gareth Barry was my central midfielder uh, because of his lack of pace and the amount he'd run up and down the field. Again, by the 60th, 70th minute, he was just really tired. He was really dead. He did a great job during the time that he was playing for us. But then there gets to a stage where it was required for me to take him off. So I would constantly take him off and put somebody else on, be it the player of the year, Jensen. Um, I brought on uh, whoever I brought on. I actually brought on uh, a centre-back for quite a lot. If you guys remember, I used to bring on Mustafi at CDM um, instead of Gareth Barry about three, four weeks ago before I had uh, a better replacement. Um, like Going into this current weekend league, we're going to be using Sadio Mane at right wing instead of Sterling or Walcott because I need the nation for the Seven Nations challenge, for the, you know, the Seven Nations minimum. And Mane has like 67 stamina. So it's very likely, again, that around the 65th, 60th, maybe even 55th minute, depending on how the game's going, I'm going to be bringing Walcott or Sterling on for Mane and that's going to be the substitution. So it's really circumstantial to the game to the team and to the players that you have and what your requirements are. It also could be a situation where you're 1-0 up in a really tight game, you want to change formation, and instead of me going 4-3-2-1, I go for a 4-2-3-1, get two CDMs, and have to take off like a Wayne Rooney or a Kante or a Matic and bring on that Leun at CDM or that Dario Serna or the player of the year Jensen at CDM just to you know really butch up that defence. And again, there's, there's something, a case to be made for if you're 1-0 down in a really close game and there's 10 minutes to go and you switch up to a 4-3-2-1 to really try and put the pressure on in the last 10 minutes and you don't want to have Bellerin and Luke Shaw as your left and right wing. Bellerin isn't too bad at right wing because of the pace, but Luke Shaw lacks the pace. So you might want to bring on, say, Sterling or Leun or... Um, or whoever I've got, Jota, you know, and put them on the left-hand side and improve your team that way. So it, like, it genuinely is just dependent on how the specific game is going and what your personal requirements are for that game. Now, the squad building uh, challenges here 
uh, guys. Um, we ended up completing all the squad building challenges. I showed them all for you. I didn't spend a single coin on a single player. Every single player we had for all four of the marquee matchups were achieved by just opening packs from our rewards and from the bronze pack method. It was brilliant. It felt really good to not have to spend a single coin. The next question was uh, from CP3 Lost Clippers. I think. I think, I think that's his name. He says, hey Nep, if you read this, mom, get the camera. He says, I'm a constant gold one player with 27 wins, but couldn't reach elite once. I know that I often rage and get mad because of some losses and I blame FIFA for it, what I shouldn't do, but I also try to improve my players a little bit like buying Firmino instead of uh, in form instead of normal Firmino, but I don't feel a big difference. Do you think in forms and player of the matches that play way better than the normal version, for example, Hazard? I don't know which version to buy. Uh, in short, no, but there are circumstances where yes. What we're seeing this year in FIFA, which we've never seen before, is the, the, the lower rated players are getting humongous boosts. The mid-range players are getting big boosts and the big players are getting small boosts. So Ronaldo's 93 to 94 card wasn't a big boost, or 94 to 95, sorry, wasn't a big boost. It was only small. In fact, let me get foot head up right now and take a look at some of the uh, some of the in form. So Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, from his 94 to his 95, um, he went from 92 pace to 93, 92 shooting to 93, 81 passing to 83, 91 dribbling to 92, 80 physical to 82, and, and 33 defending to 35. So the, the, the gain is marginal, and it won't be noticeable. And in the terms of, in your case, Firmino, I actually think he had quite a big boost, didn't he? Um, so Firmino got uh, two pace, three shot, six passing, three dribbling, two defending, and four physical. That's, a, that's, a, that's an upgrade that you might notice, but it's not going to be game-changing. It's not going to be like, okay, he was good, and now he's scoring 100 goals a game. Like, what you've got to remember is, is the, the percentages of how much everything has gone up. For example, his passing has gone up by six, but when you look at it, his short passing has gone from... Where is his passing here? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where, so short passing has gone from 82 to 88. That's only a 6% increase. 6% in the grand scheme of things isn't that great. It's not that big, it's not massive. We get another Movember card as well, by the way, guys, which is good. So um, I would say like there are some informs and we can actually take a look at Charisma, the, the guy that I bought, or even Leun. Um, when we take a look at Charisma, now he's gone from an 82 to an 85. However, he's an upgrade, had an upgrade of two pace, four shooting, six passing, three defending, sorry, three dribbling, two defending and five physical. That's quite a big upgrade. And then if you look at the likes of Leyun, I, th I don't know, Leyun's gone from an 81 to an 84. Like that's straight away, three points is huge. Leyun has gained two pace, eight shooting, six passing, four dribbling, four defending and four physical. That is a massive upgrade for a card where you will 100% notice the difference. And there are lots of little players like like like, like Khomeini, for example, for this week. Um, Khomeini is an 80 to an 83, and he has gained, what's he gained? Five diving, four handling, four kicking, three reflexes, four speed, and four positioning. That's a huge boost. You're adding like you know, 4% or 5% per section. Whereas like Ronaldo, when we go back to him, it was get one or 2% per section. So the boost that you, you feel or don't feel will come from um, the players that get the biggest boost. But players like Firmino, and this was explained to me many years ago by Rob Hodgson in EA, where like a striker's in form, his upgrade, instead of, if you know, if you had 50 games and scored 50 goals, Instead of 50 goals in those 50 games, that inform might have got you 51 or 52 goals. Like the diff what you're experiencing out of them isn't huge, it's margins. So there are some cases where it's not worth uh, the upgrade and some cases where it is worth the upgrade. Now I didn't, once again, didn't get through all the questions. I've got some awesome stuff to talk about again. But this, guys, is going to be the end of the video for today. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.